Hello, this is Doc Frank. I'm the organizer of the CBTC World Summit 2023 conference. And I want to tell you a little bit about this conference. This session was also there for people to ask questions. But um, if nobody comes up to ask questions, then I will just explain a bit what this conference is about. And I also promise to give some new information, including the structure of the conference, which wasn't really that clear so far and only has recently come up. And I also want to go through the agenda, which is really taking shape. There are only a couple of confirmations left over, but all the rest of the conference stands. So it's a very strong event and it will all be ready to go for you in less than three weeks from now. So it's coming up very quickly. So this conference is very different from any other conference of CBTC that you have seen so far or that you may have heard of so far. Normally CBTC conferences are in-person events which happen very often in North America, in the USA or in Canada, sometimes in Europe, but this is rather rare. So in most cases, no matter where you are in the world, you need to travel to the USA or to Canada. And there may be all kinds of issues related to that travel costs to start with, the travel times, depending where you're coming from, uh, visa applications that may be rejected, uh, internal allowances within your company you work for, for overseas travel, which may be rejected. So all kinds of issues that could be coming up that's preventing you from going to such a conference or have prevented you from going to such a conference in the past. The CBTC World Summit is deliberately different. It's a virtual conference where you don't need to travel at all. You can watch the sessions from any computer with an internet access. So no matter where you are, which country you're in, which city you're in, whether you watch it from your office, from home or from a deck chair on the beach, you can watch it from anywhere you like. There will be three sessions, three live sessions. Every session will take six hours. Plus then there is a following one hour question answer session just for the VIPs. I will talk about the VIPs in a moment. And those three sessions are in three different global regions. Session one is for Asia Pacific during the daytime in this time zone. Session two is for North and South America, which will be during the daytime in America. And session three is for Europe and the Middle East, and it will be during the daytime in that time zone. And how this fits together and how it would look like from one single time zone, we will talk about in a moment when we go through the conference agenda. So I wouldn't expect everybody to watch all the sessions live because that would mean that at least one of those sessions would be during your nighttime. And even during the days, you may have other things to do. You may have certain work of obligations that you can't get rid of, that you can't push aside or delay or postpone. So therefore, it's very important to have a replay feature. So what it means is that all the presentations of the conference will be recorded and they will be available for replay on demand. There are two different options. There's a standard ticket where the replays will be available for 14 days after the conference. So once these files are uploaded, they will be available for 14 days. And in those 14 days, you can watch it whenever you like, uh, as often as if you like. So if there's one presentation where um, you wanted to watch it again, for better understanding, then you can do this as well, as often as you like. It's really on-demand viewing, um, as you may know, for example, from Netflix or Disney Plus or any other uh, on-demand viewing channels. The other option is a VIP package. For the VIP package, you will have lifelong access to the recordings. So that means you are not restricted to 14 days to watch everything you want to watch. Uh, you can watch it basically anyway in, in three weeks, in two months, in half a year, 
uh, one presentation per week, anything that you like, any reason that you like, any time that you like, complete freedom. There are a few other perks for the VIP program as well. Um, they are all listed on the conference website where you can sign up for it, which is docfranktraining.podia.com slash summit23. And I don't want to repeat all the benefits of VIPs, but the, the most notable one is certainly the lifelong access to the recordings, to the replays. So the new information here is really the structure of the conference and also the agenda, which so far hasn't been published because I was still waiting for speaker confirmations. Actually, today, about uh, well, a few hours ago, I have published the agenda on the uh, conference website. Uh, you will see if you go there in the contents of the conference that there is a preview option for the agenda. So it's now viewable without signing up. And um, what is new also is the structure of the conference. So I thought about it. What happens very often with live conferences is that um, there's a call for papers, so or a call for presentations. And then speakers from anywhere can uh, suggest what they want to present on. So that means the speakers determine what will be presented. And the conference organizers can pick certain speakers or cannot pick certain speakers depending on which topics they want to have presented, but they don't have a free choice about the topics. Um, they basically have to take whatever the speakers suggest to them. So for this conference, for the CBTC World Summit, the, con the concept is very different. I have picked topics that I would like to see at a conference where I would want to pay for a conference to go there and watch these presentations. And then for these presentation topics that I picked, I was looking for the best um, suitable speaker for each of those topics. That's obviously a very different approach. And I must say it worked very well for most of the topics. I found the ideal speaker so that the topics presented will really be by and large the topics that I wanted to see at the conference. There were one or two exceptions where I just couldn't get anyone presenting on the topics because they were so um, leading edge that there were commercial sensitivities. Uh, where the, the companies did not want those topics to be publicly presented at this point in time. Uh, but, but by and large, I think in, in 16 of the 18 cases, I got exactly the topic that I wanted to see presented at the conference. And these topics are not just interesting for me, and I hope they will also be interesting for you. They are also structured. So I thought about uh, what this presentation covers. The live sessions for the conference are on the 20th September, that's a Wednesday, and the 21st of September, that's a Thursday. And we talk about the concrete times in the different time zones in a moment when we get through the agenda. And then there will be on-demand playback. I mentioned this already before. Uh, either for 14 days if you buy a standard ticket or for lifelong access if you go for the VIP option, which is not that much more expensive. Um, it's 200 Australian dollars more. So it's $300 for the standard package, which is very, very competitive compared to other conferences. And it's $500 for the VIP pack. That's Australian dollars, not American. And um, the you also for the VIP pack, you also get some training vouchers for discount training courses. So if you wanted to uh, make use of those offers, you would basically get the VIP upgrade pretty much for free. So let's have a look at this uh, structure of the conference, which really looks like a training course. So that's a complete box that highlights the conference and um, one of the topics that will be addressed in the conference is supply. 
So that means we look at the supply market specifically at a new supplier that is emerging into the CBTC supply market. Uh, we then have typical stages of implementing CBTC, starting with a planning stage. Then we have uh, a specification stage. Then we have project delivery. And then we have the operation of the implemented project. So in all those phases will be covered by certain presentations in the conference. The majority will be on the planning, the specification and the delivery stages, because this is where most things can go wrong and where insights from the conference presentations are most important. And then the last module or the last element of this conference structure is the transformation of a railway organization that introduces CBTC. So you see it's a complete picture and all those six elements will be covered by conference presentations and you will see in the agenda that those terms, those module terms, supply, plan, specify, deliver, operate and transform will come back so that you can see from the agenda which presentation will cover which of those topics. So that's a quite structured approach to this conference. So um, what you probably have seen in previous conferences, you, you had this hodgepodge of presentations that didn't really fit together in, in any shape or form. And when you came back and somebody asked you what was presented at the conference, then you didn't really quite know what to tell. So it was like a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of the other, um, but, but not really a, a structured approach where you say, okay, this conference covered the entire range of a CBTC implementation from the planning stage over specification through delivery to operation. And we also talked about elements of the supply market and elements of the transformation of railway organizations towards um, CBTC. So I think that's a big benefit. It's, um, it's almost the effect as a training course where you have a very clear curriculum of elements that are included in the training. So it's, it's similar here, uh, just that the, the training or the, the knowledge transfer is done by the 18 presenters of the conference. So let's start. There's the title on top, CBTC World Summit. It's happening on the 20th and 21st of September. The conference vision is worldwide sharing of leading edge CBTC insights. And the mission of this conference is to create the best global CBTC conference in history. And, and I think this is not hyperbole. I think this is really uh, realistic to make this happen. Um, so that's the agenda status as of today. I updated it about half an hour ago before I recorded the session. So it's really very, very current. And uh, let's have a look at the three sessions. So we starting off on the left hand side here with session one, the first one, which is for the Asia Pacific region. So you've got your session start times here by different time zones. So if you are on the American East Coast in New York City, it would start actually on the Tuesday just before midnight at 11 p.m. at night. Uh, if you are in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, it starts at midnight on the 20th of September. Um, if you are in Central Europe, for example, in Berlin, it would start at five o'clock in the morning on that day. Uh, in the Middle East, Dubai, for example, it would start at seven o'clock. In Delhi, India, 8.30. In Singapore, at 11 o'clock in the morning. And in Sydney, it would start, this element would start at 1300, which means 1 p.m. local time. So depending on in which time zone you are, I hope you can find your place uh, related to one of these time zones. And your own time zone may be exactly one of those or um, in the vicinity of one of those time zones. And then um, the session start times here for the different time zones, they come up again here for the presentation start times. 
So the first presentation here would start at session start time plus zero hours. So for example, if you're somewhere in Central Europe, you would use this start time here for Berlin, which is five o'clock in the morning. And this presentation would start at five o'clock in the morning plus zero hours. So that means at five o'clock. This one would start at five o'clock plus one hour, which means six o'clock in the morning. This one at seven o'clock, this one at eight o'clock and so on. So this is how you read the session start time. So you pick your session start time up here and then you fill it in for all these presentation start times. And then you are adding zero, one, two, three, four and five hours to find out the start times of the uh, specific presentations. So um, here on the top right hand corner for every presentation, you see the module of the conference structure. Those are the six elements that I just showed you previously in the PowerPoint slide. So the first presentation would be about delivery of CBTC projects. And it's about converting a legacy rail corridor to a GOA for unattended train operation. And this is something that's happening in Sydney for Sydney Metro. And it will be presented by my friend Stephen Alday. Uh, who lives and works in Sydney in Australia. The second presentation one hour later will cover or will be part of the specification uh, element of the conference structure. And it's about the, um, the work that's necessary to take a standard off the shelf CBTC product and turn it into a working train control system for a sophisticated metro. And the presentation is given by somebody from Singapore and Singapore Metro is certainly one of the most sophisticated metros in the world. Uh, Robert Cook, who is one of the local CBTC specialists will give that presentation. The next one is about transformation. And that's a presentation I'm giving myself as one of the uh, most prolific speakers on CBTC here in Australia in the region where I live. And this is about transforming a railway organization to CBTC, especially for railway that's coming from a conventional signaling system with signals and fixed blocks. Uh, the change to CBTC is really quite massive. And there are a number of things that need to be considered that a railway may have never faced before in, in their history. So therefore, um, I think it's interesting to have a closer look at this. The next presentation is about the planning area. And this covers the multi supplier interoperability of CBTC in China. The Chinese have developed an own set of CBTC standards that allows for interoperability in a similar way to ETCS in Europe. And the presenter there is a professor that is one of the key members of CAMIT, the China Association of Metros. The fifth presentation comes from Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is a very busy railway and when they implemented CBTC, uh, they didn't want to have their existing operation disturbed in any way. So they managed to bring CBTC in to install it, to test it, to commission it without disrupting the operating railway at all. It's a concept that I call zero disruption delivery in my training courses. And I've written an article on this as well in the RSE news. And um, this will be presented by Jens Peter Brauner, who is the head of Siemens Mobility in Hong Kong. The last presentation of this session is from Indonesia, from Metro Jakarta. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Jakarta is one of the most congested cities in the world. And this presentation is about delivering CBTC in a city that's so busy and hustling and bustling and uh, doesn't really have the peace and quiet to deliver CBTC um, properly, but it's still being done. And this presentation will be about how this works. And then at the uh, end, there will be a specific fireside chat just for the VIPs. 
uh, where uh, all the speakers of the sessions will be invited and VIPs can ask questions as much as they like for uh, about an hour. And you will see that those fireside chats at, are at the end of each of the three sessions. So session number two is for North and South America. You see the start times here and you also see how those sessions really change. So for example, uh, if we take Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, which is midnight, it's a good starting point. So that means that the first session goes for six hours. That's until six o'clock in the morning. Then we have one hour for the VIPs. So that means at seven o'clock in the morning, Rio time, session one is completely over, including for the VIPs. However, session two only starts another six hours later at 1 p.m. Rio de Janeiro time. So you see that there is a gap of six hours between uh, the end of session one and the beginning of session two. Again, same structure, you see the session start times, uh, which means the beginning of the first presentation for all of those different time zones. And you can see down here that in some time zones, it's already going uh, into the next day, into the Thursday 21st. Now let's go to the presentation topics. The first presentation is about formal methods for CBTC specification and it's presenter from Sweden. Now you may say, why do we have somebody from Sweden presenting for the America session? You will see. What he's presenting has been relevant for the North American market and uh, I don't want to give any more spoilers. Uh, it will be relevant for the American region. Just trust me on that. The second presentation is also from a presenter from Europe, from Scandinavia, this time from Denmark. But uh, David is a consultant who actually works on CBTC in New York and they are currently changing their CBTC strategy, which is a fascinating story. New York has been fascinating for the last 25 years, their journey towards interoperable CBTC. And it's very interesting, including for me, what is now happening? What will they do? What will the new strategy will look like and to what extent is it different from the previous strategy. The next presentation is, and, and you, can, you can see here the uh, elements of the conference structure which are covered by those presentations. The third presentation is about the original CBTC standard IEEE 1474, the history of it and the evolution of it. So this standard was published for the first time in 1999, 24 years ago. And um, it's constantly um, developed, it's constantly evolving. And it's important to see and to hear firsthand what the further plans are for this set of CBTC standards. And the presenter is no one less than the chair of the working group developing those CBTC standards. Joseph Kimyaga from Canada. So uh, we, we have, that's, that's another example for the most relevant speaker for this particular topic that I managed to get on board for this conference. The next presentation is from Metro de Sao Paulo in Brazil. And you will see if you haven't heard of Sao Paulo, the metro there and their applications of CBTC, I, I think you won't believe your ears. So you will find if you did a bit of research that Sao Paulo has a, a wild mix of CBTC applications from all kinds of different suppliers. And they also operate at a very, very high uh, capacity, a very high service frequency. And that's why I call this presentation Metro Capacity on Steroids. That's really uh, quite impressive what they're doing there. It's, it's way out of the ordinary and therefore very relevant for the, uh, for the conference to basically make it as interesting for you as possible. 
The next presentation uh, still needs to get a speaker confirmed. That's one of the last gaps that I have in, in, this, um, in this agenda, but I hope I will get this done relatively uh, soon. The idea is to have somebody from San Francisco, from the Bay Area Rapid Transit uh, presenting about their plans for uplifting the capacity of their network with the help of CBTC. And then the last presenter from, for this session is from Canada again. It's a consultant by the name of Naeem Ali and he is specialized on unattended CBTC. And uh, accordingly, he will present on that topic and um, tell us about the, the major differences between CBTC with drivers and unattended CBTC. And then at the end of the session, as usual, uh, a one hour fireside chat for the VIPs where they can ask questions to all the speakers that will be attending this fireside chat. So last but not least, we come to session number three, and this is for Europe and the Middle East. You see the start times over here. And again, you see that there will be uh, a gap between those sessions which makes it very hard for you to watch all of these sessions live so for example in singapore the second session would start at midnight and go to six o'clock in the morning so right in the middle of the night for singapore um, the vip session would go from six o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock in the morning and then it continues at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, which is nine hours later. So again, you have a gap between this time zone and, and that time zone. And uh, just to, to give you an idea what it means, where those three sessions are in a single time zone. So these breaks in between are just for, well, for me, hopefully to get a little bit of sleep because I will definitely be hosting all three of those sessions by myself. And um, if anybody wanted to watch those sessions, then um, yeah, maybe you get a little bit of rest in between, but still it will be um, quite demanding if you really wanted to see all of those 18 presentations live. The first presentation in this session comes from the Middle East. It's about a CBTC application in Dubai for a people mover system. And the specific about CBTC in Dubai is that it doesn't use secondary train detection, which is quite special and uh, not many railways they are doing this, but this is a good example to explain how this is done and how uh, CBTC can still work very reliably without a fallback system with uh, secondary train detection. The second presentation, I'm still waiting for a speaker confirmation. That's the speaker that I currently have in mind, Guillaume, uh, presenting on the Nextio program in Paris, in Paris, um, which is a CBTC application for a mainline regional fast rail. So CBTC is normally not uh, chosen for mainline applications the there are a few exceptions which are relatively rare um, copenhagen the s-bahn in denmark that's a suburban rail system in copenhagen in denmark is using cbtc and also the suburban network in perth here in australia where i live in the future will use cbtc for their suburban services the next presentation is the only one that we have regarding the supply industry. There are some new suppliers emerging in the marketplace. Uh, I didn't want to um, put too much emphasis on this in the conference, but I wanted to have at least one of those new players presenting. And this is the company Aselsan from Turkey, uh, which is currently developing their own CBTC product and having a first uh, reference application in, of course, Turkey in Istanbul. So we will hear about this. The next presentation is from Stockholm in Sweden. 
about the CBTC application and migration plan for Stockholm for an existing railway where CBTC will be introduced. And uh, you will see from that presentation that it's not without its challenges. The next presentation is about testing for CBTC, especially tool based testing. And the presenter comes from a strong background with testing tools, particularly for ETCS, the European train control system, but also for some uh, similar technologies in other countries. And uh, in this presentation, he will give us his ideas, how he thinks those test tools can be adapted and used for CBTC, which I think is very, very interesting and may benefit the testing landscape in CBTC projects quite substantially. And then the uh, last presentation, number 18, is actually from Copenhagen in Denmark. I just mentioned this as one of the examples where a mainline railway, a suburban system, would use CBTC. They are currently having a CBTC in grade of automation too. That means there are still drivers on board and CBTC will support the drivers. But they have plans in the future to migrate towards an unattended operation in GOA4. And this planning and all the necessary considerations for this will be presented by the very last uh, presenter that represents the supplier who have delivered CBTC in Copenhagen and also will undertake the technical part of this upgrade. So, and then we have a last third and last uh, fireside chat for the VIPs. If you would want to go for the VIP option, then of course you are invited to all three of those fireside chats. Um, if you have time or if you want to make time, um, some people may even get up during the night to see those sessions because I'm pretty sure they will be very, very interesting. So at the uh, lower end of the page, there is the registration uh, website again. As you can see, as I said, it's docfranktraining.podia.com slash summit23. And um, if you go on this website, you will also have the possibility to uh, view this agenda here that I just showed you exactly this one. And uh, then you can read again in peace and quiet. And uh, my wish would be that you find this confer conference of interest and that you want to attend yourself. But also, if you think that's interesting and it's a good idea and beneficial for people in the industry, then please share it with your colleagues, with your friends. If they haven't heard about it, they will probably be grateful for the pointer, whether they can attend or not. But in any way, it will be an important information about something that's happening in the marketplace. And I think this conference concept is really quite revolutionary. It's certainly shaking up the existing uh, market of CBTC conferences, which is very traditional. Some people may say, others may say a bit old fashioned maybe, but um, it's definitely very different. You really need to be there in person. There are no replays. If you don't show up, then you basically have no chance of getting anything from this conference. And um, and what I have here with the CBTC World Summit uh, will put the whole thing on its head and uh, improve things, hopefully for the better. Um, one thing is, of course, to present as, as I wanted uh, to do it, the best conference in history, the best CBTC conference ever, uh, which is, of course, a very high aim. And uh, if in the future other conferences copy some of those ideas and so that the entire uh, market of CBTC conferences improves, then that would certainly be a, a nice fringe benefit that's also good for the entire industry. So um, that brings me to the end of it. Uh, I haven't got anybody on here to ask questions, uh, which is fine. Everybody is busy. If you should have questions later on, you can just message me via LinkedIn or you can just send me an email to training at docfrank.com.au. 
I'm very happy to answer that also via LinkedIn messaging. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem finding me on LinkedIn. Maybe you're following me already. If you want to search for me, just search for Doc Frank and I should just pop up right on the top of the search results. So with that, thank you very much for your attention. And um, I hope I see as many of you as possible at the CBTC World Summit. It's a fantastic conference with, with many, many top level international speakers from 14 different countries. I think it's the most global CBTC event that was ever done. I don't think we ever had a CBTC conference where speakers came from so many different countries. Um, I'm sure you will enjoy it. I'm sure you will get a lot of benefit from it. You will learn a lot. And as you were seeing at the beginning of this presentation, um, there is really a structure where you can take the presentation as building blocks, which fit together into a complete package, going through all the different phases of CBTC planning, specification, delivery, and operation together with the two overarching elements, the supply market sitting on top or at the beginning and the transformation topic sitting underneath and supporting the entire value chain. Thank you very much for your attention. This will be available for replay for those who couldn't make it. And uh, again, I hope I see you at the conference. And uh, you may also get interested in the other things that I have to offer for CBTC, specifically training courses, which uh, are very famous. I, I, I dare say um, it's definitely the longest running public CBTC training in the world that I'm offering, but I'm constantly uh, updating it and keeping it up to date. So with that, see you at the conference. All the best and bye for now.